Let's look at recursive descent parsing in Java for our T0 language, or T0 expressions. Um, we just saw what they were in Racket, so we're going to build on that same knowledge. It's going to be the same code, sort of line for line, with one caveat that the scanner is more difficult to work with. So I'm going to digress on, on Java scanner for a moment. Um, and something I forgot to mention last time, um, one thing I've done when we made our grammar in class, I was careful to include a token that started off every sort of new expression, a special punctuation. And that made our life a little bit easier because as soon as I saw a token that I had a hashtag, I'm like, I know I have a bin up coming up. Or if I saw an angle bracket, I know I have a parenthesized expression. Um, and we didn't have to sort of read in three or four things and then have an if statement about, well, do I have one of these or one of those? So I set up our language to be... Uh, particularly easy, even for recursive descent parsing. Um, and you can certainly have grammars that are not recursive descent or not immediately amenable to a recursive descent parsing, where you have to do a lot more look ahead. Take a compiler's class, talk about parsing there. There are entire graduate textbooks on parsing that are hundreds of pages long. Um, uh, Matthias Felizen, uh, who's received career awards for education in computer science, uh, he has a quote that uh, parsing is the Vietnam of programming languages. Yeah, you can go down a rabbit hole and go a long way, and there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Let, we're going to go ahead and ignore and bypass that whole part. Understanding a recursive descent parser, I think, is important, and it's a great skill, and it will put you in good stead. And if you're ever designing little languages uh, yourself, yeah, try to make them amenable to recursive descent parsing. Make your grammar simple enough that you can do that. You can still get very natural grammars. So, um, but <laughs> I will entail. That's one reason why uh, for our bin up only takes two things. Um, we, yeah. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave it off there. Um, okay, let's talk about uh, recursive descent parsing in Java using a Java scanner. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and look inside class expert. So this is going to be a static method, because remember, we're taking a scanner and producing a tree. We're not starting with a tree, so it's not code that's going to be distributed necessarily over all these subclasses. Um, it's going to be a static method. We do this before we even have an expert object. We're trying to create an expert object. Think of almost this almost like a constructor. You can give a scanner construct an expert object. You know, like, how can we construct an abstract class? And you say, oh, we're going to return one of the four subclasses. And some people will say factory pattern. Ah, okay. Anyway, let's go ahead and look at um, parse. I'm going to overload parse just like we did for racket. If you give me a string, I'm going to go ahead and make a scanner out of that string and immediately go ahead and call parse on the version that wants a scanner. So in racket, without the types, we didn't have the overloading explicitly. Um, I had a con branch to handle out of the top that immediately went back. Uh, in Racket, I can overload explicitly. Okay. Um, parse, if you just give me a scanner, well, here's my main parse function here. It takes in a scanner and a string of punctuation, so the scanner can tell what characters uh, end in expression. And my son has a cold here and is making little noises while he listens on headphones to a video. Um, enjoyable. Okay. Uh, so punctuation is just going to be the characters that are used for parsing, and I have to carry it around. Um, I should say, here's what I want to do. I want to make a special scanner that does things a little bit differently. In particular, the built-in scanner object splits by white space and overlooks, doesn't even count white space. If I want to say, hey, a, or, you know, three hash four, Counts as three tokens, because in my language, I, if you have three hash four and a bunch of other stuff, I want the three to be the first token, and then the hash, and then the, the four. Um, and scanner won't do that. It will read one whole word, not separate by white space, and then it'll skip all the white space. You can s change what it considers white space. You can say, hey, I want a punctuation to be considered white space, but then Java Util Scanner will <coughs> never, ever, ever give you that uh, punctuation, because it said, oh, it's white space. I, I'm not even going to return that to my user. So... I want all the has next and next methods and next double and you know next token. Um, I want to over. I, I want to hey finally get some mileage out of object-oriented programming. 
I want to go ahead and uh, extend class scanner and make a you know Barlin scanner or a T T scanner for that's suitable for what I has all the same methods and works in the new behaviors to work on my domain. Uh, I spent all this time in Java and never really got to have a good cogent uh, time to override things, and now I can override it. And they make class scanner final, not letting people override it. I mean, I guess for sort of security reasons, people slipping in their own scanner class into. Yeah, okay, well. Um, okay, so I'm going to have a whole bunch of my own methods. Uh, has next, uh, so I want has next double and uh, next double, okay? Uh, except I want them to split by the punctuation. So I'll, I provided functions for you. Has next double splitting by punctuation and uh, has has next token splitting by and next double splitting by. And these are all often the utility on package. So uh, we're going to have this. Is, the first line is, hey, if I see a, a double at the front of my in input stream, go ahead and use that. Okay, return that. Um, if I see a uh, angle bracket at the start of my input stream, go ahead and do the parsing for that. Uh, if I see a hashtag at the beginning of my input stream, go ahead and do the parsing for that. And I went ahead and I left expert.parse quite small. Uh, this is this if corresponds to that same con we had back in the racket. But I went ahead and deferred the code that goes inside each of those con branches and put that inside the corresponding class. That just felt the, like the right way to do it since I have those classes and I'm forced to make separate files anyway. So I, inside class num, there is a static parse. Inside paren, there is a static method parse that turns a paren. Inside here, and what are these do we'll look first at the bin op dot parse. Um, hey, so static method expects a bin op at the front of the scanner and scans off exactly one of those and returns the bin op object tree, a tree rooted with a bin op struct object. Okay, so let's go look at that. And again, I apologize for all this utilion has next double splitting by. It's <laughs> Um, if I could override scanner, it would look a lot nicer, but whatever. Uh, I'm not bitter. It's okay. Da -da 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 -da. Let's go ahead and look at binop and look at the uh, parse method inside here. So again, the method for parse, um, I can't quite tag as an override because it's a static method, but I want to grab the documentation from the general parse and Assume that's being used here. Um, what is the purpose? Uh, given a scanner, consume exactly one bin up off the front of it and return that. Okay. So first of all, I just make sure that we really do. Now remember that uh, in the unlike the racket, I made named tokens in my Java program start named constants uh, start token and stop token. Um, okay. So first of all. Hey, I'm supposed to read one bin up off the front. Make sure that uh, the next thing on the front really is start to. I consume that first token and verify that it's what I want. Okay. And do I have a, yeah, consume and verify the opening punctuation. Okay. Uh, it's important that I consume it. It's defensive programming to say, hey, assert that it really is equal to start token. This is the part that simply consumes that first token. That's the one important part. The surrounding assert is defensive programming. Okay, my recursive descent call, just like I had in Racket. Um, go and da, 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 da. where was the Racket code for a parse? Uh, there we are. Uh, consume that hash. Make a recursive call to get the whole left sub-expression. Okay, let's do the same thing here. Make that recursive call, get the whole left sub-expression. Ooh, and that's a bug. Um, let me fix that in multiple places. Let me go push that out. It will never evince itself in our program, but uh, anyway. Uh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, grab that thing off thing. Go ahead and grab the one next token, not a string, not a recursive call, just grab the one operator and put it into the, the field. Okay. I'll sit it in your lap. Okay, you can sit in my lap, mister. Um, okay, so n think of this as the next method, a scanner.next. <laughs> Has next and next. Uh, yeah, grab the one next token and put it into my string called operator. Um, oh, do this defensive check. If my list, uh, so I have this uh, list of all the known operators, make sure it's there. If it's not, I go ahead and throw Java has the right exception for this input mismatch exception. The input didn't match what it was supposed to be for bin ops parse. Okay, then my other recursive call, read off one whole big huge honking expert right off the front of the input stream. Um, and then go ahead and consume the, the next thing, which the next token, which has to be that closing hash mark. And again, I have an assert that it really does equal that. Um, but regardless, the part highlighted in or yellow is the key part that I need and the other part is defensive programming. Then go ahead and return my new bin op, just like I had here. Do, 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 do. So almost line for line, not quite. Some of the error checking is done a little bit differently and in slightly different places, and I used a named constant. And the biggest difference, I think, between this racket code and the Java code is that the I split my Java code among all the different files. I could have had it all in one place, in this case. This is a static method. Um, I could have put it all up in expert, and it would look a lot like this. Uh, since I have the classes, it's a little bit writer, more correct to decompose it like this. Okay. So, uh, is that all I wanted to say? I think that might be all I wanted to say. Let's look at this here. Uh, yeah, come back and just talk about uh, test functions. Um, it'll be a little bit somewhat optional, but I recommend uh, looking at the code. If you don't understand the code, look at the next videos about the structure of the test code that I will go over there. Okay, thanks. Bye.